My journey with Bulova started at a relatively young age. I had a relative who was employed by Bulova in New York. I remember her visiting us with the most stylish watches I had ever seen. They were simply beautiful but elegant. Watch after watch made a statement about art and design. In my opinion, no other American company has mastered the space of function, meeting style, when it comes to designing watches. But little did I know that Bulva had their own moon watch, a watch with great history, great design, and great style. Let's talk about it. Omega Speedmasters were selected by NASA in the 60s as the official watch for its lunar missions. Bulova made space history on August 2, 1971 during the Apollo 15 mission. A moon pilot chronograph customized for lunar conditions by Bulova engineers was worn on the moon by Commander Dave Scott whose Speedmaster crystal popped off during his first lunar excursion. As a result, he had a prototype of a Bulova lunar pilot as a backup. And so he opted to replace his Speedmaster with the Bulova lunar pilot. And the rest is history. In 2015, the watch sold for $1.6 million at an auction. And as a result, Bulova released a version of the watch to capitalize on the event. However, they did make a few changes that were quite notable. The automatic movement was swapped out for a 262 kilohertz high frequency quartz movement that's known to be highly accurate to the point where it results in an accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds per year. When it comes to the dimensions of the watch, we are looking at a 45 millimeter diameter watch. It is very large. 45 millimeters is really nothing to blink at. There is a presence to this watch. It is slightly larger than the original size that was worn on the moon. It has 52 millimeter lug to lug measurement, which by itself is quite, quite large. And you will find that that lug-to-lug -lug measurement is quite a bit of a challenge for, for those of us with average size wrists of seven inches. It is 13.7 millimeters thick. The specifications on this watch indicate that it is actually 13.5 millimeters thick, but when I use my device here you'll see that it's actually 13.8 and it's 13.8 in large part because of that crystal that just sits atop there you can see that's about a two millimeter height and so at the very least it is 13.6 millimeters without the crystal but of course that's part of the character of the watch the watch also has 20 millimeter lug width so any band 20 millimeter band would work well with this watch however because of that massive diameter of this watch the 20 millimeter seems a little bit on the smaller side and so it's a bit of a odd ratio here that is going to require some getting used to. I also want to share with you the side profile of the watch. You see here those lugs turn down quite a bit. It's a satin finish 
on the flanks of the watch and you have these wonderful lever types of pushers here for the chronograph you have a sign crown as well which is a nice touch to the watch but it's a polished crown so it doesn't quite match the case along with the pushers being polished overall there is super luminova on this watch i believe it is bgw9 super luminova and when we start to look at the details of this watch, it is absolutely stunning. It's beautifully designed. You see in here that there is some portion of the watch that is a layered portion of the watch. So this dial here, all the way around within there, inside there, there's a dip down into that little channel so this is a raised center circle disc dial with a gap around the chapter ring that you see there it's beautifully beautifully designed and then there's a tachymeter around the outer edge of the watch here these markers here are applied markers and they are, as I mentioned before, probably BGW9 loomed. The markers at the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions are actually uh, truncated versions of these markers so that you can make space for these dials here. So it's quite well designed. Really good job of designing all these pieces. The flat matte black dial along with these stunningly white hands and markers really gives this a visibility unlike most other watches very similar in fact to the Omega Speedmaster that we so have uh, come to to be known as the standard moon watch um, that there's all this hype about so again very well designed let's go ahead and try out the chronograph here when you click on the top pusher upper right pusher you see that the dial at the three o'clock position is uh, swinging around pretty rapidly and then when you stop it here this is actually uh, giving us a a ten point four five second interval there you can see that pretty clearly there 0.45 so you can do this uh, to the hundredth of a second which is pretty um, exciting you can also see at the six o'clock position here that that dial at that six o'clock position is uh, marked with the 262 kilohertz but that ticking is occurring twice per second so thus referring to the high frequency and then at the nine o'clock position here you can see that that a sub dial is going to be measuring to 60 minutes so again very well designed watch lots of detail beautifully designed only drawback I see is this whole uh, notion of having to I'll worry about the size of the watch at 45 millimeters and 52 millimeters lug to lug it, it's very challenging the other thing about the profile that I wanted to point out is that these lugs here curve down pretty drastically and in fact they also feel a bit sharp when you put the uh, watch on your wrist if you have smaller wrists or even if you have large wrists I believe that those lugs will be digging in to your wrist as you uh, try to to wear this watch on a, a daily basis so something to keep in mind the strap itself is a, uh, a leather strap and uh, it is labeled as a Bulova strap here you see that um, the other aspects of this watch that are notable is that it has the date for this uh, watch Apollo 15 um, for the Apollo lunar mission July 26, 
1971 to August 7, 1971. And after his second um, EVA, where his Speedmaster crystal popped off, his third EVA, EVA 3, on August 2, 1971, um, was the uh, excursion in which this watch was worn. Um, and as I said before, the watch did sell for quite a bit of money at auction at $1.6 million dollars in uh, 2015. So, a few more details about the watch here. We talked about the accuracy of the watch. Um, let's see, the, the sapphire, it is a sapphire crystal, and it uh, has an anti-reflective coating on the crystal itself. Uh, and the case material is 316L surgical grade stainless steel in silver tone and black dial. Two interchangeable straps came with this particular model, which is quite nice. So there are two straps that came with this model. One is a Velcro nylon strap, and uh, the strap that you see here with this beautiful pattern, those uh, diagonal square patterns there. Let's see, uh, the nylon, black nylon with a new buck leather patch that commemorates the date of the mission, um, 8-21-1971. There is a gift box as well. So just a few other things I wanted to point out with regard to this watch. The Omega logo is clearly visible on the back. Um, the watch itself, you know, and wearing this watch, it is really, uh, I've received quite a bit of compliments from folks whenever I wear this watch because it, it just is um, really a, a well-designed piece of art. And uh, as I said, they made a few adjustments from the original model, which I believe was uh, automatic as well. So uh, let's take a look at what this watch looks like on the wrist, and we'll go from there. Here is my 7-inch wrist. I'm going to back out of this a bit so you all can see here. Here's my 7-inch wrist. And you see that the lugs are uh, barely at the edge there. And uh, you can see how that fits. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap there which says it's not hugging the way that you'd like it to hug on the strap. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Bulova Lunar Pilot. Some rich history of uh, space travel. There are a number of watches that have that history of space uh, travel that um, I'd like to share with you all and so I'll be going through one by one so you can get a good sense of what we're talking about. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tech Conglomerate with another watch review. Would love to hear your thoughts. Would love to get some comments from you regarding um, this piece and whether or not it's a piece that you would want to add to your collection. Um, I'm going to go ahead and loom this up a bit and see how it does so you can get a good sense here of the level of loom on this device. Let's see if I can get this done. Let's see, here we go. All right, so I'm looming it up, looming it up. And what do we have here? You can see here pretty clearly that, um, and I'll compare that to say, um, let me compare it to one of my Seiko watches here. So you can see how this stands up. Go ahead and compare it to this watch. These are Seiko watch and Seiko's known for its loom and you can see here that the loom is pretty significant on the Seiko. And so the loom could be much better here on that uh, Bulova Luna Pilot um, as compared to the Seiko, of course. But uh, Seiko does such a great job of looming all of their markers. It's, it's amazing. Um, with that, folks, if you want to add this to your collection, please uh, let me know why you'd want to add it. If, 
If not, let me know why. What are some of the challenges with this watch? Most folks have a challenge around size uh, with this watch, and um, including myself. And so it's it's a bit of a challenge to to wear this as a daily watch. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like the videos that you have been observing on this channel. My goal is to continue to provide these videos to you all who perhaps uh, want to explore watches or have a liking for various affordable watches. And that's the goal of this channel, just to bring uh, watches to the masses. With that, this is Tech Conglomerate. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, rest of your day, rest of your month, and rest of your year. Until next time.